The Metal Gear Solid series always had a rough relationship with the PC platform. Most titles in the franchise didn't even have PC versions, and the ones that did weren't all that great when they came out. So, with the recent re-release of the PC version of MGS2 on GOG.com, I decided to take a look at all the possible ways to play MGS2 on PC, including emulation. In this video, I'm going to discuss emulating the PS2 version on PCSX2, emulating the PS3 version on RPCS3, and the proper PC version that you can get on GOG.com. So let's begin. First, let's take a look at emulating the PS2 version with PCSX2. PCSX2 started development in 2001 and continues to be updated regularly. It's free and you can find a link to it in the description below. It's currently quite accurate and has a huge list of playable games, with MGS2 being one of them. So how does it play on PCSX2? Well, the performance can be almost perfect if you have the right CPU. In my case, the i5-9600K is enough to play the game at 60fps almost all of the time. I've only seen a few drops in certain cutscenes. Now, what about the graphics? The graphics are almost perfect. This option is limited to 4x3 aspect ratio, and some cutscenes are limited to 30fps, but with the PS2 version being the original version developed by Kojima's team, you get almost every visual effect displayed perfectly. And PCSX2 allows you to render the game at higher resolutions, like up to 8 times the native PS2 resolution. But unfortunately, there are a couple of texture glitches on PCSX2 that keeps it from being a perfect presentation. The water texture is fully opaque, and some characters have textures that look too dark, as you can see here. To fix these bugs, you need to set blending accuracy to full on the GSDX settings, and that unfortunately makes the game unplayable because the frame rate drops a lot. On the other hand, as you'll see later in the video, this version is the one with the best fidelity outside of these two glitches, so it's still a valuable way to play the game on PC. It's just up to you whether or not you find these glitches game-breaking. Aside from that, the audio quality is great, and if you have a DualShock 3 controller, you can use the pressure-sensitive buttons to put the gun down after aiming. Now, let's take a look at the PC version. This port was released in 2003 and wasn't very good even back then. To get the most out of it, you have to install a fan-made patch called VSFIX that corrects a lot of problems with this port. You can find the link in the description below. The best part of this version is the performance. It runs perfectly even on low-end hardware. You'll be getting a locked 60 FPS most of the time. I say most because some cutscenes have a 30 FPS cap, like the PS2 version, unfortunately. But those are few and far between. In short, you don't have to worry about performance with this version. As for the graphics and audio, well, that's where you'll find some problems. First of all, the UI is very low resolution and stretched from 4x3 to 16x9. In some cases, it's straight up glitched. Then, there's the FOV. The way V's fix supports widescreen is by increasing the FOV. That works fine, however, it has a side effect of showing you things that aren't supposed to be on screen, especially if you use the full screen cutscenes option. You can see the problem here. My recommendation is to keep the optimized 16x9 FOV, but don't use the full screen cutscenes option. However, that's not all. There are quite a few missing visual effects in this version. Even V's fix doesn't fix all of them. Here are some of them. Light effects such as the red light on Soldier's night vision goggles are too dim, as you can see here. You can barely see them compared to the other versions. The hair textures are a little bit glitched when it comes to transparency. Some objects update at a half frame rate there's some weird artifacts when looking at the sky, kind of like a broken motion blur effect, missing a green filter in underwater scenes, missing helicopter turbine effect in the scene, missing this lightning effect, missing this splash effect, missing raindrops, bad texture quality, 
Anyway, you get the point. This version is definitely missing a lot of graphical effects, and as a result, I think the experience is quite worse compared to other versions. That's not all either. The sound quality is the worst of all the three versions. And some cutscenes have a weird audio mix where the dialogue comes from the left channel only. Short Manhattan, your classic nightmare. In the end, I think this version is quite poor, unfortunately. And seems like there was no effort to correct these problems for this re-release, which is disappointing. Finally, let's take a look at the PS3 version running on the RPCS3 emulator. This emulator started development in 2011 and recently it's been having quite a fast development. It receives updates very frequently and its performance increases at a surprising rate. MGS2 on the RPCS3 emulator runs very well, up to constant 60 FPS if your CPU is fast enough. On my 9600K, it drops frames frequently, but the game is perfectly playable. Not only that, I haven't seen any visual glitches from the emulation itself. That's not to say that this version is perfect, though. Despite the emulation being visually perfect from what I've seen, the PS3 version itself had some differences compared to the original PS2 version. And, of course, these differences are still apparent. Some of the differences include missing raindrops like the PC version, missing a green filter on this scene and others, missing the green filter on underwater scenes again, missing the helicopter turbine effect, missing the lightning effect again, missing a contrast filter on this scene, and a few other minor differences. As you can see, the differences are similar to the ones on the PC version, but overall I think this version is still much better than that one. There are a few advantages to this one. The cutscenes don't show parts of the screen that aren't supposed to be seen, like on the PC version. And at the same time, the cutscenes play in full screen, 16x9, with no problems or stretch. The UI is also perfectly adjusted for 16x9 without stretching. Most scenes that were limited to 30fps in other versions now play at 60fps. The textures are also higher resolution compared to the other versions, and don't show the color bending that's present in the PC version, and audio quality is top notch. Also, if you have a DualShock 3 controller, you can use the pressure sensitive buttons as well. So overall, I think this version is the best for image quality and 16x9 sport. It's the most modernized version you can get of this game at the moment. The downsides are the missing effects and the high-end CPU requirement. So now that we've taken a look at all of the options, what would be my recommendation as the best version to play on PC? Well, I think the best experience overall is the PS3 version on RPCS3. If you have a good enough CPU, definitely go for that one. If you don't have a powerful CPU though, the PC version is still a perfectly fine option for you. That leaves the PS2 version on PCSX2, and unfortunately, at the time this video is being recorded, I can't recommend that one because of the texture glitches. I hope that they're fixed soon, because that one has the potential to be the best version for people that want the most accurate presentation. It's just not quite there at the moment. Anyway, I hope you've liked this video and that you have fun enjoying this amazing game on PC. If you did enjoy the video, please give a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. I am Shalashaska, also called Revolver Ocelot.